The next presentation is from Sayan Gosh from the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. And he will talk about craft based proxy applications and derivative benchmarking on Okami. Hello, everyone. Hope you can hear and uh, see my slides. Um, so I'm going to talk about some of my, thank you. I'm going to talk about some of my efforts on um, um, analyzing the um, analyzing the performance of some graph codes that we are working on. And uh, this is kind of an ongoing project. So um, we don't have many results. Uh, we have a few results and uh, we are still working on um, several aspects of this. Um, so let me see. All right. So just to give you an idea, we have uh, different applications and we have uh, proxy applications from those uh, applications uh, which are written in different uh, programming models. And then we have, uh, uh, you know, carved out some derivative benchmarks out of them because we felt that uh, in some cases existing benchmarks were not um, very useful because uh, our cases were uh, very much tied to the structure of the graph and the operations. So we had to build, um, you know, successive use cases as we went along. Um, so uh, typically, uh, this is one aspect of graph algorithms, I guess, depending on the applications, people will say different things, but typically graph algorithms are used extensively in, uh, you know, data analytics, uh, algorithms like uh, coloring, matching, community detection, they are part of all analytics to get. And uh, mostly these algorithms have relatively less computation and more memory accesses and, uh, you know, Nowadays, there is a um, there's a need to use accelerators, um, but uh, porting graph applications to accelerators means we are mainly using them for their bandwidth. So the ALUs are uh, not utilized that much, as you know, many of the algorithms have zero flops. So you can imagine that, you know, um, uh, the the arithmetic part uh, is not utilized, and also the um, also about vectorization, I uh, I don't think there is much uh, vectorization impact, but this is something that we have to uh, measure, and this might vary from algorithm or application to application. And one important thing to understand is that graphs are multifarious; the structures change. It won't be uh, bipartite graphs, or it won't be small world uh, graphs. Um, they can have different shapes, so different neighborhoods, and uh, that can lead to a variety of challenges. So uh, in terms of communication, that can lead to asynchronous uh, regular communication, which are considered adversarial. And in uh, reality, that can cause a lot of network contention. Um, at, and this is something that we have seen in uh, Fogaku, where we used, um, you know, after 256 nodes or uh, something, uh, we were just not able to get uh, the scalability. And there was a lot of communication bottleneck. So, what about existing benchmarks? So the existing benchmarks like Graph 500 BFS, which uh, you know the cartoon is shown, um, um, the communication um, volume is shown here um, on the right. So it kind of uh, is not sufficient to to uh, to understand our use cases because uh, what BFS would do is that it would essentially traverse the diameter, right? But for our use cases, we need to actually scan through all the neighbors and do something. And this can lead to drastically different communication um, aspects. So as you see there for the pairwise uh, communication volume for BFS, which is the left plot, it's not the same as the right one, which is uh, the right one is more of our use cases. So, um, so as I was saying that, you know, popular, uh, traversal based algorithms uh, and benchmarks may not be uh, necessarily representative. And um, so I'm going to discuss about two use cases. Uh, one would be um, a derivative benchmark um, that we are only testing on a single node. And the other one would be a distributed proxy. So let's talk about the derivative benchmark as it Turns out a lot of graph applications have this kind of a motif that is shown on the right. Uh, like for every vertex, you scan um, its neighbors, uh, you scan all the edges, and you perform some work. And uh, it, it 
it turns out that uh, you know if there is a disparity in in the maximum and average number of edges performance will be impacted so the parallelism becomes unstructured so if you are using um, you know open mp um, uh, you know outside this um, uh, loop on vertex then uh, each thread can have different uh, amount of work and that can lead to load imbalance so we wanted to quantify the load imbalance and we wanted to see what would be the performance on real world uh, graph. So um, what we did is that we came up with a very small uh, benchmark, uh, which is essentially, you know, uh, influenced from stream, but it does, uh, you know, like, you know, stream kernels, but the, but the operation is done within uh, a neighborhood. So essentially there are two loops, one loop over vertices, another loop over edges. And then there is your stream copy, stream add, et cetera. So, and we wanted to actually measure the depth, traverse edges per second, so higher is better. And, uh, you know, use this, uh, use this activity or uh, as a sandbox for building efficient uh, parallel graph algorithms. So what we saw is that, so this heat, heat map, um, you know, think of the red spectrum being good, uh, higher is better, uh, bigger steps, and blue white, not so much. So uh, we tried different graphs, uh, all 100 million plus edges, which is not very large, but, but you know, let's say that it's uh, sufficient. And uh, we, the way you would uh, look at these different uh, heat maps, and each of these heat maps uh, plots, they signify uh, different kernels, so copy, max, and add. And uh, so the way you would uh, look at them is that the column-wise variation, uh, it depicts differences in the compilers. And as we can see, there are differences. And the row-wise variation, uh, it signifies differences across graphs, which means there is something that we can do uh, by improving the parallelism. And uh, we noticed that typically arm clang is doing uh, well in most of the situations. And uh, there are other aspects, um, you know, uh, that we want to actually, this, um, this, this benchmark currently uses OpenMP, um, uh, standard OpenMP work sharing loop. So we want to use tasking and we want to use the try, uh, you know, ZFIL instruction and see how it improves the bandwidth. So this is one use case. The other use case is the proxy uh, application. So this is a proxy, a distributed memory proxy for triangle counting. And um, it's a very simple uh, code. It just exploits the graph structure. So um, in the graph structure, uh, if you look at the right-hand side cartoon, so there are, uh, you know, there are these uh, consecutive edges, the U, VW. What we have to know is that whether a UW edge exists or not to determine whether it's a triangle. UW can be, you know, can be in an another processes uh, space. So we have to do some communication to assess whether the edge exists or not. Um, so that requires a lot of, uh, you know, uh, messages. Um, uh, and, and uh, you know, there are some ways, some tricks to actually reduce the number of messages. Um, so we came up with this uh, proxy to study basically, um, you know, what happens at scale, uh, how we can reduce the communication. And uh, we quickly found out that it's just not sufficient uh, if we, uh, you know, because the communication volume was too much. So uh, we were consuming all the memory. So we came up with a way to suspend and resume the work uh, on, um, you know, centered around a customizable buffer. So buffer size is something that the users will specify. And until the buffer is full, there will be activity. And after, uh, and, um, you know, after the buffer is full, there will be, uh, you know, communication and uh, the buff buffer will be cleaned up. And again, so this led to, uh, some scalability, and this led to um, you know resolving the startup problem because the problem we have with uh, nodes like Ukami is that the memory is too low for us. So we need a lot of uh, nodes to actually break even, and that actually requires uh, that actually blows up the communication overhead. Uh, so uh, this kind of a buffered approach improves the scalability, as we have seen. Uh, this is um, you know the the performance shows, uh, I would say, medium uh, graph. And we see about uh, 7x speed up on uh, up to 8x nodes. And this code is to be used as a pilot. 
for optimizing other applications because all other applications, the intermediate volume will be just too high. So we are testing this buffered approach and see how it uh, how it can be mapped to other applications. So in summary, uh, in summary, most of our codes are distributed. And as I have said that we have a startup problem and um, we are trying to mitigate it with a fixed buffer and a suspend restart mechanism. But uh, the buffer size is kind of a trade-off. If you uh, set a too large buffer size, then there will be out of message, uh, out of memory. And if there is, uh, if you set it to be too small, then you are essentially doing more iteration. So this is something that we have to analyze, come up, uh, with a sweet spot. And uh, typically we have seen that more processes and less threads lead to better results. So there is not much on node parallelism. There could be more. I think this is part of the research that we are seeing that how we can improve the parallelism. And we are typically using 12 to 24 P's per node. And uh, um, as I was saying that, uh, you know, uh, we, are, we are using these uh, codes uh, to, to accelerate the research uh, in investigating the communication, avoiding heuristics and how to extract more bandwidth from the node, like, you know, have more open MP threads. Um, and we have to see yet the impact of SVE. And uh, typically I would like to applaud the Ukami team uh, for uh, Ukami support team for being uh, uh, very helpful with all the user queries and uh, everything was uh, straightforward and we, we are having good time with this note. Thank you so much. Questions? Um, I have a question I can ask. Um, so I have a code that often changes the buffer size and I will get out of memory errors a lot, right? So um, how do you decide or determine what size to make the yeah, that's, buffer? That's part like of the challenge. Tune it yeah, or yeah, that's right. That's a uh, that's kind of a challenge because there is no good way to know what would be the right buffer size. So what we are trying to do, another thing that we are trying to do is that graph codes typically they don't talk to all the processes. So each process will talk to a subset of processes. So you don't have to necessarily have the order of p overhead, space overhead, as long as you can determine how many neighbors it's talking to. So if you set your neighbors to be of that, uh, you know, to be a subset, then you can probably try a larger buffer. Uh, this is kind of subject to research and I, I don't have a good answer to this. Okay, so it depends how many, um, Yes. one uh, thing I would is say, that it depends I, how many. Yeah, it depends on, on the structure of the graph, I would say mostly on the structure of the graph and also how the graph is distributed, like what's the process underlying process graph. Okay. Thank you. And can I ask a question about the, on a couple of slides, including this one, you noted that uh, 12 to 24 uh, threads per node uh, seem to be node. better, PEs, right? So do, um, do, is that due to saturation of some on node resource or do you think it's actually uh, the way it, the process is interacting with the uh, inter-process communication, MPI and so on? Yeah, the inter-process communication, but it's kind of, a, as I was saying, we realized that we don't have much on-node parallelism, as in we didn't focus too much on the OpenMB aspect. And I think we can restructure our code uh, to make it more uh, thread friendly. As in uh, currently the OpenMP regions of the code, it won't make sense if you have more than four uh, threads or something. Okay. Uh, so this is something uh, that we are trying to see how we can uh, you know, reduce some of the atomics and uh, make it more um, parallel. Uh, okay, no, I, I understand that and thank you. Oh, no, actually, you, you mentioned the magic word there. You're using Atomic. So what, what's been your experience with the performance of those? Um, I, I, I have not made much measurements, actually, so I can't say. Um, okay. So basically, I've used very less OpenMP threads, so I, I don't have a good answer. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm trying. Okay. To... Great. Thanks, Sian.